Hi YouTubers, welcome to another service and video from the Sorts 6233 Society for the Restoration of Trains. And you can see what I've got in front of me, it's Flying Scotsman on its original 4472 in apple green. The banjo dome tells it's an A3 and it comes with this 8 wheel tender. I actually bought this by mistake. On eBay I've got a search for Mini Tricks Flying Scotsman and I'll came the list and then it was Flying Scotsman I jumped in, saw the good price, put a bid on it, looked closely and realised that it was a double O gauge. I kept thinking, oh, somebody will outbid me. Nobody did, so I've ended up buying a lovely double O gauge Flying Scotsman. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can get it running. The seller says that it tends to go and stop. So I'm going to put it onto the rolling road and we'll see what happens. The casing tells us it's a Triang Hornby R850-5. Overall, I would say this is in reasonable condition. Doesn't look too untoward in any way. Nice and clean. At the moment, I can't see anything there. The motor looks quite nice. The brushes don't look too bad. And maybe just a wee bit of cleaning up would do. It's got a firebox, uh, which I hope will also run. So, if I use the servicing cradle, try and apply a voltage directly to the wheels. There is an attempt at moving because the wheels are going reasonably well, so there's obviously something happening there. Okay. Turn it round. And apply power directly to the poles of the motor. And there is an attempt. You can see that there. So maybe it just needs a wee bit of old TLC and some lubrication. So let me take it down a wee bit further. I tried gentle lubrication of the axles and the bearings of the motor. It's not doing a lot. So at this stage, I'm going to remove the motor by taking out the screw here hidden by this red sleeving but it is definitely there. Let me turn it around. And there's the rear screw which holds in the Triang X04 motor. It's drawn back the way. The mechanism doesn't seem to be snagging. So that's good. So let me try the motor. As a precaution, I am in fact going to check the windings on the armature. Three windings, turning it so that the join between the two is uppermost. I've got my meter on ohms, so I carefully measure across the gap. And it gives me a reading of 8.9 ohms. Turn it round by one third to the next gap comes up. And take the same reading, which is 8.8 .8 ohms. And then the third gap should give me the same reading. 
and that's 9 ohms, which is very close to 8.8. .8. So I checked the continuity of the coils in the motor, and they're all the same. That's pretty indicative that the motor is OK. So now I'm going to fit the uh, brushes back in again and test it once more. direction I would think it perhaps needs a little bit of running in Hold down slowly Speeding up again. And reverse. Mm -hmm. I've not got the rear screw in correctly. So I shall build it up again and we'll test it further. See you in a moment. Now here's something interesting. I'm going to put the power up. And it seems to start all right. Turn it the other way. And there it goes. Not a problem. Then I turn it down. And I turn it back up again. And it stops. And I'm beginning to think that the motor's faulty. I don't think it's quite as healthy as it tries to make out. So as it happens, I've got an old motor, um, which I don't know if it works, but I'm going to try it anyway. So let me just strip this one down, check the old motor, get it in, and see if that makes a difference. This is the replacement motor. I put in a pair of brushes, cleaned up the armature, removed hopefully dirt from the cracks, in the gap, sorry, in between the commutator arms, and now we apply a bit of power, and there it goes, responding very nicely, very low power, and then taking it into the opposite direction without any hesitation. That's behaving much better than the motor which I've just taken out, this one here. So I'm going to put this apparently better working motor into my Flying Scotsman. Right, I've hooked it up, new motor in, make sure everything's okay, I can put, apply some power. Working fine in reverse. And forward, just a slight hesitancy. This motor has been sitting idle for I don't know how many years, and it needs greater torque on the forward direction. So it might just a wee bit more boost. But in reverse, it's fine. Turn it forward again. And that's a lot better than the original motor. So I found it myself a working flying spot. Next step, get it up and running. And just while I'm here, I'm just going to turn the power down a wee bit. And I want to see what the fire glow box looks like. Let me just take the light out a wee bit here. Ah yes, you can see there, which is in the cabin, 
definitely glowing. Take that out. It's definitely glowing. So I've got a fire glow. And there we go. Right then. So uh, that's seems to be quite good. The motor very often happens. Either the armature's not as good or it might even be the magnet. I'll just put that aside into my for later box and get a new magnet and see if that makes a difference. Okay, next step getting it up, checking the bogies, get them lubricated and then have a look at the tender. When removing the bogies it's very easy to just take the screws out without noticing but the front pony is held in with a collared screw and the rear pony is held in with a collared screw which is actually the longer of the two. So be aware when you're putting these things back which way around they go. The collar fits into the recess at the bottom of the pony the pin helps drop it into its locating hole and then you just gently wind it in and it can be tightened up while still leaving the bogey free to move. Similarly with the front uh, bogey and in this case this lip here has to be at the top when the locomotive is running so underneath when you're fitting it on and the collar fits through the hole pin sits into the locating hole and then just gently find the thread and there it goes making sure that the arm is still kept free when it's tightened up like so I've lubricated the bogey wheels here. Oh, I didn't do this one. Okay, so I might as well just apply a little bit of lubrication. There is a gap between the wheels, so I just slide it in there, and eventually that will work its way in. So there we have 4472 in apple green, an A3 Pacific. Um, so, put that one aside, that's ready to go, and let's have a look at the tender. Eight wheel tender, and in this particular example, there is a sound box to give, as I think the advertising slogan went, a realistic chopping sound. Probably when you're 12 years old, a few years ago, that would be a realistic chuffing sound. And I have to admit, I like it. So I'm going to say nothing about it disparagingly whatsoever. Looks in good condition. Decals could be doing a replacement. We've got LN and something, nothing there. And on the other side, yes, pretty good on this side. So a new set of decals wouldn't go amiss. I don't know if I've got any, but I think I know someone who might have. Buffers in good condition, coupler in good condition, wheels, free enough. Yeah. So, there we have. Fine Scotsman. Ready to roll. Of course, one thing I need to sort out somehow is a test running track because I'm now into N-gauge. As I said at the beginning, I uh, purchased this by mistake. Um, and I thought I've got little odds and ends of 
double O gauge stuff somewhere. And I do have a box Klein Scotsman, but it would mean taking it all down, taking the uh, light the track out, building it up on the dining room table, and somebody might not be too happy about that. Not unless I can persuade her with a box of chocolates and a bunch of flowers. The price we have to pay, folks. The price we have to pay. Anyway, let's see if I can get this to run with some power attached. I'll just hook this onto the track up here. One there. And one here. And there we go, right away. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's quite a successful restoration, and although the uh, the motor didn't appear to give me any problem, it oops, on one, uh, it obviously. There's intermittent, probably an intermittent coil connection somewhere. I have seen that once before. Everything looks okay, but when it starts working, it kind of gives way when it warms up slightly. Incidentally, when I was looking at my box of spares, I came across this. And this is what a Flying Scotsman firebox looks like when it's out. And I have had this, and to be honest, it actually still was in separate bits. This was in its pack. These two pins with the screw was in a pack. The bulb was in a third pack along with the wires. And it worked. I built it up and it works. So I don't know if anyone's looking for a spare firebox for one of these um, Flying Scotsons. Uh, a reminder, it's model R850, but I'm sure there are other variations. So I'll try and find a piece of track that I can run flying spots on for a bit of a test. And if I can, I'll show that at the end of the video. And if I can't, I hope you'll appreciate that. So let me just bring you back into view again. Just for the final time, there she is. And uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed that. We whilst I've worked on N gate a double O gauge, and it's nice to work on this one. Next time I see a flying scots listed, I'll make sure it's an N gauge one. So I can get my little N gauge mini tricks flying scots one up and running. So thanks again for watching. Hope you liked that. Uh, glad to have you subscribe if you will. Um, I'm now in the habit of found out how to get in touch with people to subscribe. So I'm trying to get through as many as I can just to say thank you. Um, so if you subscribe and like and comment favourably, I would appreciate it. Until then, take care people and uh, have a good time. Thanks for watching YouTube and bye for now.